welcome to those are, those of you that are watching this on the replay. Thank you for watching. My name is Nurse Choma. I'm the founder of Choosing Nursing over at choosingnursing.net where we're here to help you succeed in nursing. So today we're going to talk about specifically about five common food and drug interactions that you absolutely need to know for the test. So if you fit th if you feel this is information that you feel you're going to need to know, then I would definitely encourage you to watch this video. In addition to the videos, I also do have a um a free guide. So the purpose of this guide is to introduce you into the things you need to understand, you need to be familiar with when it comes to pharmacology. So this is called it's pretty much called a how, how to master pharmacology um, and it's like a free guide it's about 10 pages long and in the guide I go over different things you need to know about farms some terms about farms um, there's also a conversion table in there as well and then I also also reference some other resources to help you learn more about farm so it comes with a guide and in addition to the guide via email you're going to receive like an email course series as well so if you want to download the guide you want to simply go to the website okay i'm going to go right into it so these are pretty much um specific foods that you should definitely know because it's definitely going to be on the exam and you're definitely going to see it in nursing right and so these are some very common foods but you may not be aware of all the drugs that interact with it so that's what i'm going to share with you today and i'm going to share with you a little bit about why it interacts um so because it is it's important to know this kind of stuff because the thing about the exam is not the, the exam is learning more and more how people um try to prepare and so a lot of people try to prepare by just memorizing stuff, but then it will say, well, how, like, it will say specifically, okay, well, how does it do this? You know, like, it won't just say, okay, it won't just be like listed, but it will say, okay, well, how does it affect that? The first one, number one, is going to be grapefruit juice. So, um, so I'm going to give you this um, definition here. So grapefruit juice possesses a high interaction with um with almost all types of drugs actually with a lot of types of drugs and so the juice it modifies the body's way of metabolizing the medication which affects the liver's ability to work to work the drug through the system okay so pretty much the reason why it is with grapefruit juice is that because it if it makes it difficult for the for the liver to metabolize it well Okay, so there, so there's actually more than one group of drug, and the way that you'll see this type of question, it can be different formats, meaning that it can be where the question is saying, okay, the patient's gonna eat something, or what food tray do you select, or what should you educate the patient before they take this drug, that kind of stuff. So a lot of times it mixes nutrition with drugs, okay? So grapefruit juice, there's actually four types, one, two, three, yeah, there's four types, there may be more, but uh, actually there is more, I'm just give, I'm giving you four actually. There's four types of drugs it, it, it doesn't work well with. Number one is psychotropics, all right? Psychotropics, that's number one. Number two is anticonvulsants. So what you notice when I'm doing, I'm giving you what? The classifications, right? Because you need to be familiar with the classifications. So it, it doesn't work well with psychotropic medications, anticonvulsant medications, right? For seizures. Um, the one that we all should know is, that's very familiar is statin medications which i went over yesterday so like a torvastatin simvastatin those type of drugs and then here believe it or not levothyroxine all right level thyroxine which is synthroid all right so those are the drugs that it, it actually doesn't mix well with psychotropic meds so i'm giving you the classification so obviously that means you need to be aware of what are some examples of psychotropics but at least that way you can you can address it you can be aware of it and then anticonvulsants and then the statin drugs 
and then the levothyroxine drugs okay so that's the first one is grapefruit juice all right so for the test you should know this you need to know that, that those classifications that i mentioned so you can identify on the test okay the second one number two is green leafy vegetables um and here's what i want to mention that i don't have my all my notes actually is that there are specific medications that um we give as an antidote all right there are specific medications that we give as a, meaning that we give it to stop the effect of something we give it to reduce the um like for example vitamin k is the antidote to coumadin Right, so there's certain types of drugs that are antidote, so to speak, because it's, it reverses the effect of that drug. So it's important to be aware of antidotes. Okay, so anyways, so number two, we have the green leafy vegetables. So this is gonna be um, broccoli, right? Brussels sprouts, kale, um, parsley, spinach, right? All of this, is your green leafy vegetables and these are going to be high excuse me these are high in vitamin k all right these are high in vitamin k so you want to so the thing is the biggest thing is that it's not so much where um it's not so much honestly where um the patient can't eat it at all but they cannot eat large amounts of it all right so eating large quantities or making sudden changes in the amounts of the, of eating those vegetables, it interferes with the effectiveness of safety and safety and warf, safety of warfarin therapy. This is on the cheat sheet, I believe. Yeah, it is actually. I think it's on the last page, the farm cheat sheet, not the farm guide. Um, okay, so yeah, so they can't eat a lot of it. All right, they can't eat a lot of it. So eat, eating large quantities or making sudden changes in the amounts eaten of these vegetables, what it does, it interferes with the effectiveness and the safety of warfarin therapy. So they have to avoid it, all right? So this is so it's important that we educate our patients, right? It's really important that we educate our patients when we're taking these drugs so that way they know not to eat it with you know um certain types of foods or not to consume certain, type, certain types of foods or to eat small amounts of it all right and you do need to know specifically that it's vitamin k right that's in the the foods right so you should know it's vitamin k specifically so here's a good example all right so here's a scenario really fast you have a patient with the history of AFib and they need to be NPO at midnight. All right, they need to be NPO at midnight and right now it's dinner time. Would I encourage them to eat green leafy vegetables or no? Okay, here's the thing. You gotta, so the thing that, so this is what I wanna, I really wanna encourage a lot of you. All right, I really wanna encourage a lot of you. Because the, the, one of the things that we find ourselves doing is that we find ourselves picking the answer based on what we remembered, not based on what the question is really saying. Hear what I'm saying? A lot of times we pick the answer immediately based on what we remembered. Oh, bleeding precautions, right? Not based on what the question is really saying. So the question that I said was, you have a history of AFib and they're going to have surgery tomorrow and they don't have to be NPO until midnight. So should I encourage the patient to eat green leaf vegetables now? Yes, absolutely. Because if I, because if he has a history of AFib, then that means he's taking Coumadin. And if he's taking Coumadin, he has a high risk of bleeding. So I want to encourage him right now to eat, to consume green leafy vegetables so that way, the that way it, the vitamin K in the vegetables can begin to, you know, make its blood, um, um, you know, like re reduce the risk of clots. So yes, because he can eat right now until midnight. So yes. So really think about what the question is saying. Don't rush into because I'm telling you that's what the exam does. It paints questions like this all the time. 
because it's trying to see if you're really thinking about it, not if you're really if you're picking it based on what you remembered or based on what you memorized. Okay. Okay. All right. That was a good question, huh? <laughs> That's not a good question. Okay. You were, yeah. So yeah. Here. The, so so even if you need to say it, want me to say it again? Listen to it again so you really catch it. All right. Okay. The third one, number three, is dairy products. So dairy products is also a really common example that you're gonna see on the test. You know. So that we're looking at here with milk, yogurt, cheese ice cream right these are all dairy products so the biggest one of the things one of the drugs that we want to be careful with when they're on when they're taking dairy products or not to take dairy products actually is they cannot take te tetracycline with dairy products all right they cannot take the medication called which is the type of antibiotic they cannot take that with with dairy products okay they cannot take it. I don't remember exactly the reason why. I think what it does is that it actually reduces the potency of the drug when they eat it. Um, when they eat it with food, or especially with the dairy products, there's something in the dairy that um, makes the makes the medication work less. Specifically with dairy, tetracycline. They're not supposed to eat food at all while they eat it. Like they're supposed to take it on an empty stomach, either one hour before or two hours after meals. But specifically though, dairy products and tetracycline don't go together. Okay, don't go together. Number four is chocolate. So here's the thing about chocolate: when patients, when somebody takes chocolate, it increases their serotonin levels. All right. So because it because it increases their serotonin levels, that can cause something called the esophageal sphincter to relax, which will increase gastric contents in their esophagus. So meaning that patients who have what? GERD should avoid taking a lot of chocolate. All right? Did you know that one? All right. All right, and then so c chocolate, um, caffeine, all this it can trigger acid reflux. I remember I had patient. I would have patients that they knew, like they knew. You know, you this is your third cup of coffee. Like, <laughs> can I get another cup? Can I get three more? And but you have GERD. You know you have GERD, but you still taking like three cups of coffee like every single day. You know, some people are just like really hooked on it. Number five is cheese cheeses all right there's different you know blue cheese there's there's some type of cheese i forgot it's called it's like ro roker for cheese or something but it's but this is specifically cheeses though okay so cheeses it should be avoided in patients taking maoi inhibitors so nardil parnate these are all some examples of um, MOI inhibitors. So they can have aged, so cheeses, aged cheese, any type of cheese. And another thing too as well is that um, specifically with, with MAOI inhibitors, they also need to avoid like beer because what it is, it's not just, the, it's because it contains something called tyramine. So when they take MAOI inhibitors, so not just, so it's cheeses that they need to avoid, but they also need to avoid other products that contain tyramine, which also includes like beer or wine, that kind of stuff. All right, they have to avoid that as well. Okay, good, there you go, that's how you spell it, tyramine. Okay, so these are, these are the some of the specific foods and drugs that you need to be familiar with. One thing I wanna mention, like I said earlier, is that you gotta not, not just know um, Try to not only be aware of what it is. Oh, that's nice, Panama. Oh, I like that. Oh, that's a, that's a good uh, mnemonic. Um, but yeah, try not to only just be aware of what they are. But if you can go above and beyond, um, because the test doesn't doesn't usually just test you what's obvious, right? It gives it wants to see if you know a little bit more detail. Uh, if you can go above and beyond and understand, well, why is that? Why does it interact? That would even be that would be even better. Um, that would really prepare you even more. There's some other foods and everything that I list in the cheat sheet. 
Um, but that's pretty much it that I'm going to cover today. All right, you guys. Thank you for sharing. Share this video too one more time if you haven't already shared it. And thank you for liking and hearting the video. It lets me know that you like this information. All right? Have a wonderful day.